So good morning, everyone. So we have only have two people here. Uh, so tell, because uh, Professor Joe today is he has on our conference in Orlando. So today I'm here to give you a tutorial on the PyTorch. Uh, because I think in your last project, you have to use this PyTorch to finish something. And actually it's a very mainstream and popular sort of framework for the deep learning. And actually, if you just type PyTorch tutorial on Google, you will find lots of the, I mean, very, very high quality tutorial. So today, here I just show you some very basic things about these things, and to show you the basic, the history, the basic, I mean, the uh, defini definition, the crucial definition you have to learn about PyTorch. And uh, here, the slides is only, I mean, 20 slides, 20 pages, and we also offer some. GitHub about some Jupyter notebook you can handle with the uh, hand with the codes. So uh, today will be very fast because I mean if you just you, you want to you really want to learn PyTorch you can find plenty of the resource very good resource on the internet. Today is just a uh, I mean a simple a, a simple version about PyTorch tutorial. So let's get started. Uh, so just give you some the agenda is first give you a very basic introduction and how to install it and also give you some code examples. So what is PyTorch? Uh, it's an open source machine learning library and is uh, published from the Facebook. I mean, right now it's the Manta. And I think the, the most crucial features for PyTorch compared with the NumPy you have been very familiar with is three features. The first is supposed you to finish the computation about the tensor, about the data, use your GPU. And the second feature is his support, the automatic computational of the gradient. So record maybe in your past assignment, you have to compute the gradient. Uh, first, you have to derive the formula about the gradient on paper and then implement such formula in your, in your code, in your NumPy. However, in the PyTorch, he allow he he allow you to automatically to deliver the gradient of each variable, and instead of you have to handle it to do, deliver it. And the second feature, I mean, uh, sorry, the third feature, I mean, the most the most crucial one is it's making it very easy and fast to build some very complex model. Record maybe in your in your uh, last assignment. You have to implement the linear regression, uh, the logistic regression, or even some neural network manually. However, in PyTorch, everything is uh, packaged very well, and you can just finish maybe a one a linear regression or even a very complex neural network in just single single line of code. So here's the very crucial features. I mean, suppose of a GPU and uh, allowed you automatically to compute the gradient. And third, to make the build a neural network model, model or build any much more models very easily. So, and we are go through these three features uh, uh, point by point. Uh, but then first, we'll go through some very uh, history and give you a very high, very high level introduction about what kind of the deep learning framework it exists. Because the, uh, I think it, almost every big tech, like the Microsoft, like the Google, like the Manta, have published the all their deep learning framework, like the CNTK Cafe from their uh, Cafe. Also, I think also from the Facebook, and TensorFlow is from the Google and others. Some things we never know. And what's the main difference about such deep learning framework? You can you can generally to classify into two classes. The first one is called dynamic, and the second class is called a static. Uh, static. So here I just use two very uh, two different uh, pieces of code to show the difference. So the first one uh, we also call the imperative. It's just the dynamic. Uh, you actually the NumPy. The first example is from the NumPy. So NumPy is something you can treat it as a dynamic. So why we call it dynamics? You can see we first, we first define the A and the B and the C, I mean the variables and given the initial value about it. And we just define the formula C is equal to A, a times A 
and finally D is C plus one or something. And when you define this code, and we, when you run this code, the compiler, I mean, of the Python, he just doing a computation along with the compile at the same time. Yes, when you go to the first line and the Python compile this line and do the computation. So everything is dynamic is when you define, when you run, and you also do the computation. So it's called dynamic. However, if you go to the second example, I mean, I call it symbolic and also re refer as the static. Uh, what it means, it means I first define the ABC, the capitalized ABC right here, but recall the first ABC, uh, the ABC, uh, I mean, I maybe I can give you a laser here. You see the ABC right here. We don't give the value about what ABC exactly is, but we just define, we have some variables, A, B, actually, and the C is also a variable, uh, B times A. I recall here, we don't any, we don't build or we don't define any exact number about this, but we just define the variables. It's something it's somehow like the ABC, some tubes. You first, you build the tubes, but we regard what is in the tubes. And when you finish build the tubes, I mean, to capitalize A, B, C, D, Z, N, and I call the F is compiler D. It's something just, we say the tube is finished. We already finished building the tube. And in the last step, we just feed A is equal to NumPy once time and B is NumPy once times two or something. This data, I mean, the exact number is something like the water. When you finish CompI and finish building the tube system and only at the last steps, we feed into the data, which feed into the water, into the tube system you just built. So these things we call it symbolic or the static uh, and uh, actually, uh, of course, the dynamic one, the imperative one, I mean, the initial NumPy style is more convenient because you don't have to define something uh, at the beginning and compile and then fit the data. However, the symbolic one, the static, the static one is more fast and efficient because all the tube system is already compiled. And when you feed into the data, feed in the water in the tube, actually it's flowing speed is much more faster than the imperative one. And however, uh, uh, I, I will show you uh, in the list slides. So based on these two classes, the initial, I mean, the, very, the relatively old version about the framework, like the Tiano, like the Cafe, like the TensorFlow, they are all symbolic framework. I mean, the static framework. You first, you have to build the tube for tube system first, and then feed into the data, feed into the water. However, the PyTorch, I mean, the relatively new one and more popular one, the most more efficient and convenient one, is just the imperative one. I mean, just dynamic, and just 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 uh, like the NumPy we just use. So, and uh, uh, here's just some history about so the, the right now. I mean, the PyTorch and TensorFlow is the two mainstream about one. There are some other like the pedal, like the cafe, like the piano. They are kind of, I mean, not such popular because they are, uh, you know, not such convenient. And uh, I mean, they are, they appear too too late, you know, because the PyTorch and TensorFlow, I think the first version of all these two mainstream, just was published uh, maybe five year or five year or six years ago, and. Uh, the beginner at that time, most of the community member of deep learning just use the PyTorch and TensorFlow. And even some the later coming the framework like the Paddle, like the CNTK, like the MXNet, they're, they're with very convenient and the stronger features. But at that time, the PyTorch and TensorFlow already just uh, become the mainstream of some things. So people don't want to learn something new. So just, 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 uh, consist, uh, just, uh, just, just use the PyTorch and TensorFlow for most of things. Uh, okay, and here I just show you some, uh, the, remember compared to, I mean, I am saying the PyTorch is very similar to the NumPy, but with three different and crucial features. The first feature is use of the GPU. So here, uh, I just show you, use two figures to show you how GPU can support you with very acceleration on your computations. So 
here, uh, I think this, this, this uh, maybe I can, uh, I'm not sure you can see it clearly, but we fo first have to focus on this code. Here we use the PyTorch. I mean, it's very similar to NumPy. If, if we don't use the GPU support, but just put every computation on the CPU, you see the time for compute or matrix multiplication with the dimensions resultant, we have to take uh, 300 uh, millisecond to finish it. However, if you use the GPU, the same computation on the GPU, you can you get 0 0.1 MS. Actually, you add thousand of times to acceleration with the GPU support. And here is the, the bar figures right here is the speed comparison uh, use different, the very large deep learning models like the VGG, like the REST network or something. You see with the GPU support, uh, you can get uh, 60 times acceleration compared with the CPU. So here is your overview about how stronger and how crucial the GPU acceleration it is. Uh, and here is what shows some things with uh, why PyTorch actually ha I have go through it at the very beginning. If it had a stronger CPU support and very convenient auto gradient to allow you compute the gradient automatically and they're similar to the NumPy. I mean, if you are ready, I suppose most of you are very familiar with the NumPy. So um, it's very easy. The learning curve to learn the PyTorch is not sharp because it's very similar to the NumPy. Uh, and here I show you some example about uh, how, you, how to use NumPy and to build the computational graph. I mean, given some x, y, uh, some variables, and, uh, and Z, and we define some uh, computation process right here. We first uh, multiply time X and Y, and uh, add the Z, and finally sum together to get the Z, uh, C together. And now our task is, I want to based on the final result Z, I want to compute the gradient about X and Y and Z. So we first, we first see the, uh, how to implement these things in NumPy. And we will see, uh, I mean, it's, you have done these things in your previous homework. You first, we have defined the size and then D about X, Y, and you just initialize with some random about what X, Y, and Z it is. And then you define the computation. Uh, A is equal to X times Y, B is equal to A plus Z, and finally you do the sum to get the Z and same thing. And then, as when we go to the step, we have to compute the, gra the gradient. You first, you have to derive, de uh, sorry, to derive the gradient formula on the paper. You have to write down the formulas, and then, based on the formulas you write down, you deliver out. You just finish. You implement them with the with the things right here. So it's very it's very dumb. You have to do things step by step. And what is the TensorFlow is looks like? Record TensorFlow is something I call the uh, static framework or the symbolic framework. You have to first you can you have to build the variable. I mean, what we call it the placeholder right here, and define the x, y, z, and build the define the computation, and then compile this computation and the variable define at the first. And the last last step, what I call the TensorFlow session or something, you feed the exact value about the variables into the compiled computational graph. I mean, I say that the tube system right here, you feed the water, I mean, the exact value into the tube system, the computational graph. And then the, at the very last, you, you run the run session run or something, and then you call the gradient about some things. So, it's good. I mean, actually, in the TensorFlow, you don't have to uh, deliver the gradient formula and uh, implement step by step. However, this step is look very dumb also because you have to define something, I uh, mean, some variable, some placeholder, and then fill the variable. It makes you confused if you're not familiar with things. However, go to the PyTorch, our star right to uh, the, our star today. You will see. It's very, very similar to the value you, you do in NumPy. You first, you just define X, Y, Z along with their initial value. I mean, the touch ran, random is consistent with the NumPy random or something. You give them value. 
and then I mark them with some attribute is called the required gradient equal to true. This is something you mark it as a, a, a variable, which is required gradient. And then you just define very naturally the computational graph, uh, computational process, A is something, B is something, and C is something. And how you get the gradient of X, Y, and Z, you just run a simple code to see backward. Recall, you will see this uh, backward function very frequently when you use PyTorch. When you, when you call to see backward, the gradient of X, of Y, and then and Z is already, com com already com computed and stored in the, in, in, in the variable's attribute. So when you call this single line, every gradient is already finished computations. So you don't have to, like the NumPy, to do this manually to go through every gradient. But every gradient you need is already stored and finished computation. So here's the magic and very the stronger uh, stronger point of a PyTorch. It's very convenient to let you compute the gradient automatically in a single in a single line of code. Uh, and also, I want to show you the, how PyTorch is very why it's very Gallup popular. Here, the each line, the pod line, is the top top conference in the machine learning community. Like the ECB, your apes is something in there. Uh, both the very good com com conference. And you're saying, I mean, the y axis is just uh, means uh, the unique mention about PyTorch. I mean, how many percent of the people of the paper just use the PyTorch instead of TensorFlow in such conference? Uh, here is just uh, the statistic is end of the 2020s. And I think right now it should be higher. More than more than 17%, I think right now it's more than 18% or even 19% of the people in the machine learning community <laughs> they just use the PyTorch to build a model and to uh, finish the research and publish paper. So, because, I mean, the reason is very, is very obvious because you have to write lots of things in PyTorch, but very simple things in, Py, in, in, in the PyTorch to finish the one task. Uh, and here I just show you some level about abstraction in the in the in the PyTorch. Actually, it's very similar uh, to the NumPy. The first, the basic element you are playing with in the PyTorch. I mean, it's just called tensor. It's just like the ND array in NumPy. You are you, uh, you are very familiar with. And maybe a, a, a slight difference is the PyTorch allow to run the tensor or the ND array in the NumPy, but runs on the GPU. And also how you operate them, how you plan with them is an imperative and the array. You don't have to like the like the TensorFlow to define something and then feed the and then feed the value. Just do the what you do in the PyTorch or in the NumPy and bar. But PyTorch allows you to run and operate every tensor or and the array the, the operation on the GPU. And here it's called tensor, is the and the array on GPU. And what is variable? Uh, recall. When you, uh, maybe we, we go back to you very shortly, when you define X and Y, Z, I mean, the tensor in the PyTorch, here we just uh, set something called the requires gradient equal to true. So if a tensor in the PyTorch, you have a set of things requires gradient equal to true. This tensor is also regarded as what's on, called the variables. So var what is variable? I mean, the very, here I just get definition is a node in the computational graph and store data and gradient. But I mean, a, a more uh, simple understanding for what is variable is just a tensor that is allowed to store its data itself and its gradient. So when we initialize the tensor and use that required gradient, gradient to true, and then use that tensor to finish some computations. And uh, you can make sure uh, to compute automatically to compute gradient about such tensor very easily, but just by calling some uh, calling some auto gradient function. I will show you later. And there's the third level about the in PyTorch is called the module. So actually, uh, here is something a uh, neural network layer, and also you can just use some neural some linear regression layer. I mean, you can actually is there is there a class uh, abstraction of a class 
you can put different computation. I mean, the neural network, the convolutional neural network, the linear regression, the logistic regression or something. Each different, uh, every different computation, each, each different models are into these single single modules. So I will show you the example later. Uh, and here I just show you some very the piece of the basic code. So how how to how to build a tensor in the PyTorch. You can see it's very similar to the uh to to the NumPy. I have show you show you right here. Uh, uh actually you just define XYZ and give the initial value. Here is the touch rent, the random value about this, and you assign the request gradient and true. So this tensor become a variable, which just supposed to compute the gradient automatically in the following computations. And we're printing out, it sounds like this one. And when you call the C backwards, I mean, you can retrieve the gradient about X, Y, Z. Just call the uh, tensor point grade, this, this feature or each attribute about X, Y, Z, and you will see. And you can, check, you can get the gradient about this. Here is some piece of code to uh, how to load your data, load your your NumPy data or your non-GPU tensor to the CUDA. I mean, CUDA is just the GPU in your uh, GPU support system in your in your computer. Uh, so uh, here is um, maybe for, from this one. Here is just su suppose if you have already, already defined some variables from the NumPy. I mean, with extra in some NumPy ND array. And we are transferred to your PyTorch tensor. So here, PyTorch already gives some very convenient formulas called the from NumPy. So just call this PyTorch from NumPy and fit in some NumPy uh, ND array, and you get a PyTorch tensor. And uh, here's a, here is the CPU tensor. And if you want to get some PyTorch tensor to the NumPy, here also a very convenient function. Just that NumPy. And you trans back from uh, PyTorch tensor to your ND to your to your NumPy ND array, and also how about we want to send our maybe the PyTorch tensor from the CPU to the GPU? Here's a function called the two. You just send the the current T is your PyTorch tensor on the CPU and two, and you feed it the NAND of the GPU, maybe CUDA or something, and you send it to the GPU. So very convenient, and also you can check whether your current computer, current system is supporting your GPU. So here's some function you can check your whether your GPU is available. And also you can check your type or something. Yeah. You don't have to go through and memory all the details right here. Actually, uh, you should try to familiar with them in the, in the practice, in the real code. Here, just show you how convenient to finish the transfer, I mean, between a NumPy to the CPU torch and transfer from the CPU PyTorch to your GPU, GPU, GPU torch. So here just show how convenient you can finish this transition in a very single line. Uh, here is this, uh, also the, the same things to show you the, how convenient you can compute the gradient. Uh, but you don't have to go through very detail here. I just mentioned again, uh, you will try to, try to learn them in, in the practice. Here you call, we just create the tensors the tens PyTorch tensor one, two, three, and we said is the flag about the required red S2. So X, Y, X, W, B is something the variable in the torch which required a gradient. And then we build a computational graph. So uh, don't get confused about the computational graph, it's just the computation process, the formulas you define. So right here is just a, nothing but a, something like the linear, the linear combination about your W, X, and B, and you get Y. And how we count the gradient, you see, we just, Y is our the, the final results, we just call the Y backward, and every gradient about X, W, and B is finished computations. And how we retrieve such gradients, I can say into just print X point grad, and the gradient is right here, and we do a similar to the W and B gradient. So you don't have to, I mean, to, der to derive the gradient formulas manually or something, but just build a very a simple or complex uh, the computation graph right here and core the y backwards and every gradient is there and you just retrieve them by core the x grade, y, w grade and 
double grid and B grid. So it's a big idea about the auto grid, this feature in the PyTorch. Define something, define a variable, define the computation computation process, and finally just call the backward and finish everything and just retrieve it at the last. So it's clear here. Yeah, cool. Uh, and the, 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 this part is about the optimizer of, uh, about the loss. So recall, uh, in the last slides, I mean, in the last, sorry, in the, in the previous lectures. So what's, why would we have to compute the gradient? Because we want to use this gradient to build some uh, optimize, op optimization process, like, like the gradient descent or something. So already the PyTorch, you're ready, you can, you can very easily to gather the uh, gradient by the auto grade features. And the next step, we should use that gradient to boot the optimizers and uh, reduce the loss of uh, reduce the objective of the object functions for each models. And however, uh, I mean, in the PyTorch, um, uh, you don't have to, when you get the gradient, you don't have to build, I mean, the formula about optimizers by your hand, but actually you can, they also offer very convenient optimizers uh, in the in, in, in the PyTorch. You don't have to implement SGD, every step of SGD by yourself. So here's the example about how, 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 it, how it work. The first, we still define the A and B, is some um, two variables and the initial value, and we said it, it also requires a gradient. And then we define something called optimizers, and here is the SGD. Of course, it's not limited to SGD. There are, there are plenty of the different optimizers, like the SGD, the RBFGS, the ANDA, or some advanced SGD. And actually, right here, you see, when you define optimizers, what do you have to fit? The first is the learning rate, the LR right here. And AB is the variables you want to you 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 want to compute the gradient or you want to optimize about A B. So here is show you how you do the SGD uh, in a for loop. So in the, the for loop is on the different uh, in the multiple epochs, and you just define the uh, y hat, I mean the computational graph, computational process A plus B, and uh, apply some X train tensor. It's just something like the uh, linear regression. A and B is just your uh, the linear regression his weight and bias. And then you compute the arrow. Arrow is just um, your Y train tensor is your ground truth, and Y hat is something your your prediction about your linear things. And you, you just define the loss. Right here, loss is just your L2 loss on MSE. And then we just score the loss backwards. Just so recording the last two slides, when, what, what happened when you call loss backwards? When you call these things, uh, we call the gradient is a rather computation, is rather computed. So right here, when you call the loss backward, the gradient of A and B, I mean the gradient of your linear combination weight and bias, is there already finished comp finish computing? And how? And next step, you should uh, use that gradient about A and B to update to update the weight about A and B. However, you don't have to do it manually in PyTorch because you already define what we call the optimizers. You just call the optimizer step, and, the, and you are done. You are all done. So, what is the optimizer step? This function, this line is due. So first. I mean, the loss backwards already puts the gradient of A and B right here. An optimizer step is will use the current gradient of A and B, the variable you want to optimize, the, op the variable you want to update. They want to use the, the update, I mean, uh, the, the gradient of A and B and apply the formula about SGD to finish the update and A and B. So when you call, when you finish process is the optimizer step, the update of A and B is already finished. So it's very convenient. Recall here, we don't retrieve. I mean, uh, as the last two slides, I say uh, after the loss backward, every gradient is finished computation. And after the optimizer step in this function is the inner building, uh, the, the, the inner build functions, the, the systems, the PyTorch already help you to use the current gradient of A and B and finish the update of A and B. 
So you don't have to update A and B, use this gradient with the SGD manually. Everything is in this single line, optimizer step. And finally, we finish uh, here, just, we just clean the gradient of the A and B, and we go to the next iterations. So everything, if you want to implement these two steps, I mean, the last backward optimized step in the PyTorch, there may be, I mean, 10 or 100 line of code because you have to compute the gradient manually and then use that use such gradient and to implement SGD manually. However, in the PyTorch, just two lines, last backward and optimized step. That's the magic. That's the how efficient you can you can do with a PyTorch. Uh, of course, and here I, I'm showing you there are lots of the choice you can choose for the optimizer like NDM, SGD or something. And the last function is something as also lots of the different L L1, M N C cross entropy. So uh, it, it, so in your in your future research or the practice with deep learning, when you come to a task which diff, which require you have different optimizer or different loss, you just search into the PyTorch uh, documentations and search the loss and optimizer optimizers. Uh, I mean, there's the most good one, a uh, fit for a case. So it's very convenient. But the basic basic framework, the basic process is very similar, and I think. Uh, just define optimizer, define variable, define loss, and just call these two lines to finish everything. Uh, here we we'll go to the brief introduction about the third feature I mentioned about Tentosh. It allows you to define a model, we call the module, very convenient. Very convenient. So do, uh, here I, I just show you uh, how, how, how it looks. So the model actually in the PyTorch is is defined as the NN module. So this are, is the base class, I mean, already defined in PyTorch. And why you want to want to implement your own models, you just inherit this base model, NN module. And what, you, and we, what do we have to do to customize your model in PyTorch? First, you have to finish two components in the class. The first, what is called the initial class. Right here, we have to define something like the variables, like the A and B. Here's the variable right here. Like the, uh, so you define the variables, you define the parameters you have to optimize in the initial function about it, about your class. And the second component, the second thing is called a forward. So forward is something you define, is the place you define the computational process. How you, how you use the variables the, uh, you define the initial function of your class, how you, how you apply such variables to finish the computation. So right here, the forward is very simple. We just define the A plus B and X, X is something the uh, linear regression, his, his data and B and A, I mean, it's just a bias and weight of the linear regression. So you're done. And here is the PyTorch class. And we are showing the in the, in the following the, the code example, how you use these things to finish the linear regression very quickly. And here is just something, uh, the, PyTorch, the PyTorch installation is also very easy. You just type the PyTorch to go to the website and follow what your system on the computer and uh, just finish the step by step. Actually, in my experience, the installation about PyTorch is much convenient compared to something like the Python, something like the uh, TensorFlow or something. Uh, and here we just come go to the code examples. Uh, actually, we put, we'll build our GitHub repo. And uh, uh, because today, due to the time limit, we, we won't go through every example in the, in the, in, in the repo, but you can check it later if you want. OK, and we come to the. Code examples. So here is the uh, here is the repo right here, and you can see we offer I think five parts about the code example about PyTorch. Uh, but to be, to be honest, uh, because there are lots of the good resources about PyTorch tutorial, even on the documentation official documentation about PyTorch. So here uh, we we. I recommend you to go through the example we offer. 
But if you think it's not fancy enough, of course, to be, be free to check other resource. I mean, the other much uh, nicer resource. But here, just show you some, uh, where we, we go through very quickly to show you how exactly to uh, to finish or to do the feature I have mentioned in the slides. The first, the first things I mean, recall the first feature I mentioned for PyTorch is the GPU support. So here is something, uh, some code to let like you to check whether the GPU is allowed on your on computer. So you can see, uh, it's called we we call the function the torch could as a variable. It is, it is if you, if you have your appropriate GPU device, this should be true. And then we set a device. Uh, as the CUDA, I mean the GPU. If not, the device it should be set as a CPU. So every computation is uh, is put on the CPU. And here is something. I mean, uh, you don't have to go through very detail about what exactly mean. I mean, just to, just get the big idea because this thing is something uh, very very familiar with the PyTorch. You can give the uh, much of the best setting about your device and uh, and checking whether the device is available. Uh, right now, I uh, don't have to worry about it. But I'll just show you the device. We 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 always uh we always define the device as very first. Here we just use the CUDA and the RTX uh 3090s as our device. And here I just show you how to finish the auto gradient uh with a PyTorch. Actually, I have already showed you in the slides with a with a screenshot. But here is the real code. You can see first we define three variables with their initial values, with uh, and mark it as a required gradient, and we put it on devices. The devices is cool down right here. So right now the x, w, and b, the variable about your about your linear regression is ready on the CUDA and ready support the retrieved gradient. And here we just build a computation graph. I mean, uh, the computation process about your linear regression. And at the, at the very last, you call the y backward and the finish computer gradient automatically in single in, in a single code, in a single line code. And finally, you print out gradient about your x, w, and b. So you see right here. So it's very easy. Uh, and the, the, the second example right here is uh, show you a different I mean, a, a different method to compute the gradient. Uh, this thing, actually, these things is not very such uh, uh, frequent use compared to to the first example. But you recall, the first example will use the tensor backward to finish the computation about gradient. However, in the example two, actually, there are another approach to compute the gradient. It's called a torch auto grade grass. And uh, this is not very, I mean, as I say, it's not such frequently used compared with the first one. Well, I already show you here. We, the definition about your variable is the same and the computation view is the same. However, right now, I don't want to compute the gradient about the, all the variables, I mean, X, W, and P, and B. We just want to uh, compute the gradient uh, uh, respect to the of, of the y respect to the x, but not over the w and b. So here is the gradient. Recall the backward where we are compute the gradients of your finally y respect to the all the variables we define x, w, and b, and uh, and or finish. But how how I write here? If you want to want I want to only want to compute the gradient or respect to the x. So you don't have to call the backward. I just call the touch or grad the auto grade grade y and x. And uh, only the gradient of x is compute. But for the w and b is not compute. And now I want to compute not only the first order, but the second order of the x. So I first compute the first gradient, first order gradient with these things. And then you're gonna something make me get confused. What is this thing means? The create the create graph is true. So record in the PyTorch, you want to compute the high order gradient. So you have to set the create this flag to true. And it's allowed you to compute the next uh, next order about the gradient. 
So here is the first order. We just call the torch auto gradient grad. And now we got, we, we'll go to the second order gradient. We still just use the torch auto grad grad. But now the input, the y, is the gradient, great, sorry, is the gradient of x and still respect to the x. And then you got the second order gradient for x. So just I'm saying, if you are playing with some deep learning and with the first order gradient, uh, in most in most case, you just use the backward is enough. However, in some very relative complex task, which will allow you to compute the high order gradient, like the second order, you have to use the alternative approach to compute the gradient. It's called the torch out gradient and, and, and grass. Uh, and here I just show you an example about how you implement a logistic regression with a PyTorch. Uh, here is just something, the definition about the variables. You define the dimension about things. You define the, the weight about logistic regression you want to update. And you define the y hat. You define the loss. Here the loss is just the likelihood about logistic regression. And when you define these things, just call loss backward. And you can get a gradient about your uh, of your largest largest regressions uh, case weight. I think in your in your homework, uh, you are you are you are asked to deliver out the gradient about your weight in the largest regression. I think it's very complex. It's lo lots of the long formula about the gradient about your largest regression. You have to compute manually uh, of the likelihood function with respect to the W or something. However, in PyTorch, everything is simple. You just define the W, define its weight, define your value, and define the loss function, I mean, the likelihood about the largest direction. And then call the loss backward and print the W gradient. No more manually, no more dump formulations, just a single line of code, and everything's done. Yeah. Uh, here's something I, don't, I don't want to go to very deep uh, because I want to finish the same thing by 10, but actually is. Uh, called the data set and data loader. Uh, it's also a built-in data, data set classes in the PyTorch. And uh, what is the convenient things for this for these things? Uh, the first, you know, in the deep learning, uh, we have the large scale of data sets, like the millions of the image or something. And uh, actually doing the training, we not fit in all the image at the same time into the model, but we uh, sep separate them into the batch, and at each time we just feed a batch into the into optimizer into the model. So we call the batch of things. And these two data sets, I mean the data set class in the in the PyTorch, it is allowed you very convenient to fit into the to to, to I, I'm sorry to fit in fit the batch of your data into the model. So the, this things looks from some complex things, very complex, but, uh, some complex code right here. But uh, I don't want to go through very detailed to make you confused, but keep it the key point in, in your mind. Uh, the building data sets classes in the data set and data loader just allowed you very convenient to set the, if to batch, to batchize your data set, your, your data and fit it in the data. Sorry, and fit it into the model. And there are some also very built-in data sets. I mean, there are MNIST, very classical the data sets in the PyTorch. So if you if you are using the PyTorch and you want to play with some demo with the very classical data sets, you don't have to install the data set uh, or download them from some website. Every, every data set, I mean, MNIST, like the classical one, it's a built-in in your PyTorch. So you can just call such data sets with one single line, and you can also the DSS, and you can use that DSS to build a model. You don't have to manually to download from some from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, here is something how to customize your DSS. Uh, I would, I don't want you to go through it. Yeah. Uh, and maybe we'll go to the second tutorial.
So the second tutorial will be the, the tutorial, the last tutorial we'll go through today. Uh, I will left the three, the three, four, and five. This, this such three, uh, uh, as you maybe after class, you can check it by yourself. But today, the, I will show you the last example, how you finish the linear regression and uh, with the PyTorch in, uh, in with the and and module. I mean, the module, the feature of PyTorch just allow you finish your uh, adding a machine learning model in very conven convenient way. Uh, so here is just import some library, and here is the ground truth, and here just would build some training set and the test sets. I mean, here's here's nothing but just an operation with a NumPy, and here is the we just plotting out. We're just plotting out the here's the ground truth and the red, red, red point is the training samples we built. And here, uh, I just pull the NumPy and the array in the PyTorch data set. I mean, recall uh, why we have to build the data set. I mean, they, they, this, this data set right here is the base class offered by PyTorch because we want to very convenient to treat them in batch. That's the, that's the motivation. So why we define something like this one? I mean, I don't want to go just go to the detail, but I mean, you can check it uh, by yourself. And then we got to to data set and the set train and data set for test, and it's allowed you to uh, to to retrieve the data from these two class very conveniently. And then we, we, next step, we want to implement a linear regression and with the NN module. So here is the class we define. This class just Define what's your model, what your computation is. So here you see here, uh, we define something in the initial called the self-linear. So what is self-linear? So it's a linear operation layer. I mean, it's a it's a it's a, uh, it's a linear layer. I mean, what's your kick has two parameters you have to define when you define a linear operation layer. The first is your in feature dimension. And the, the, the second is your out feature dimensions. So recall, uh, these things is something like the, it's just a linear regression because linear regression is also a linear operator with your input and your output. And it's also a near linear layer in your neural, neural, neural network. So we just define the neural network layer I and mean the linear layer is also equal to your linear regression right here. And uh, the parameters, I mean, the weight about such linear, uh, the weight of such linear operators is already built in. So you don't have to define the, the parameters, the weight of, of the near, near operators, but it's already also built in in these functions or in these variables. And in the forward functions, we just build the self linear because linear is, of course, is a, something like the operator is a neural network layer. We just fit into later the data into such linear operator and we got the results. So here we use, I mean, see one, two, three, four, five. We we use six layers. Oh, we use six lines of the code to finish the definition about the linear regression. And when you build a model, I mean, we build the loader about your train test data, we build our epoch, training box, we build the linear regression his learning weight and we build the optimizers we have mentioned and what the training step is very easy at each epoch we just retrieve the current batch about your training of your test and then we just feed the training x training the training data into the model we get a prediction and then we define loss is the l2 loss and then we we just uh, i mean optimize, uh, clear the gradient with the optimizers and uh, use their backward to capture the gradient about your uh, the, 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 the linear operator weights and we call the optimizer step to finish the update. So, and everything's done. So here is the, how to finish or implement a linear regression in PyTorch. So record, I mean, we go through the logic again. You define class. Class is uh, is inherent about your NN module. In this class, you define your variables. Here's the, your variables. Here is the parameters, and you define the computation computation process 
you just call the end and linear. And then it defines some um, variables on data loader. And in, in, in every training box, you just uh, fit into the data, current data into the model, get a prediction, and then compute the loss. And then compute the gradient and use that gradient to finish the, the update of your variables. Everything is done. And here I'll show you in the gradient, in each epoch, you can see that there are a uh, training loss and test loss is very is dropping very fast. And also you can plotting such training loss and test loss in a figure. And then also it's a very convenient approach to check whether your model is converged. Because if you are training of your model, I mean deep learning or or the linear regression, you have, have to make sure the the loss is dropping and finally starting to converge. And, and it's allowed you to check whether it's overfitting or it's diverge or something. Uh, here's some visualization. And here example with there some neural network, but I don't want to go through the detail right here. I mean, the basic, basic logic is the same. Define their data sets and uh, you define a NN module. And in the NN module, we define their, uh, because because for neural network, actually, it's just something like the linear network, or sorry, the linear operator, along with the uh, activation active function. Right here is a 10 edge. Of course, we can define some value. So we define things in the uh, initialization. Here is all the variables you have to update and define the forward, how you finish the form, how you finish the computation about neural network. You fit into the X, and for each layer, you just feed into the current X into the layer just defined right here and find out get this. And uh, the optimization, and you, you see here's a structure about your, of your net. We have three layer and each layer is linear, active, act, linear and a long linear active functions and something. And the training, training process is very similar to the linear things. For each epochs, you get the data, you feed the, da you feed the data into the model, you compute the loss, and you compute the gradient and finish the update. So um, it's almost the same. And finally, is the result we got, even for the complex things we can finish this. OK, we're ready again at time. So I don't want to take, take time here because I want to leave you earlier. Uh, but recall, oh, sorry, I can't really go back to PyTorch to the GitHub. Uh, I mean, I, I think the professor will put the slides along with the link with this GitHub report on the, on the course web page. And I encourage you to go through very quickly about these five parts about the tutorial and make sure you get the basic idea about how you build a model, how you build your data set, and how you train a model with the PyTorch. And of course, and uh, I want to repeat again, uh, there are, there are plenty of the great resource about how you use PyTorch about the tutorial. So here, our example, our report may not be the best. If you can find some better resource or something, just go ahead. Feel free, even feel free to share the better resource, the better tutorial you can find with your classmates to better understand the tutorial. Yeah, so that's, that, 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 that's all for today. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.